Hi, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is Fanuel Joseph Masawe. I am the Hiba Town Fair alumni from Cornell University, but I, I am also the program officer for Sustainable Land Use at the African Climate Foundation. Today I have the honor to meet and chat with the ambassador, and we are going to be diving and discuss in some of the biggest challenges that we are facing uh, currently the planet. Climate change happens to be a major interest of mine uh, years ago when I was an undergraduate student uh, in my sophomore year. I studied with Francis Schaeffer who wrote uh, a book about uh, pollution and the death of culture. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I got tremendously interested in the effects of climate change, and that was in 1970. Oh. And uh, since then, I have done a lot of work on climate change and sustainability, uh, uh, both in the U.S. and in what I do uh, with overseas interest as well. So I'm honored to be able to talk with you today. You have mentioned that uh, you you started hearing about the issues of climate since way back. Yes. And uh, now that you are in, in, in Tanzania. I've been told that you have visited many places and many regions. Could you please let us know uh, what are your observations in terms of uh, climate change for communities that uh, are in the areas that you are able to visit? Uh, years ago, in uh, 2010, right. I was a part of an African Union uh, a group of ambassadors who were stationed in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Right. And uh, uh, Ethiopian Airways took us on a junket, a flight, and we flew over Mount Kilimanjaro. And the pilot went as low as he could to uh, the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro so that we could observe the uh, melting of the snow caps. Now, that was in 2010. Now, the snow caps have even depleted more. So Tanzania is one of the principal places on the African continent that people can see the effects of climate change, uh, the devastating effects of climate change, and how that impacts all of life, not only on the African continent, but throughout the rest of the world. Through your time here and also over the years, the U.S. Embassy have been very instrumental in driving uh, issues of, in terms of mitigation and adaptation in Tanzania. Yeah, we have. You know, you, if you look at... Um, the Blue Ocean Initiative, right. uh, what we are doing in uh, Zanzibar, where we have uh, spent in the last uh, years, two years or so, uh, $25 million in rest restoring the uh, coral reefs and providing safe space for fish hatcheries to be developed, uh, where just this year we gifted the Jane Goodall Foundation Tanzanian-based Jane Goodall Foundation with 29.5 million uh, U.S. dollars to help with the conservation efforts that Jane Goodall is internationally known for, but based here in Tanzania. Uh, a few months ago, we were in Kagoma, and we were looking at the next gen, which is a solar energy operation that produces much of the electrical power mm. in uh, Kagoma. It's done by solar, and we are funding that project. Oh. And so we've been actively engaged in conservation, in preserving the landscape, and uh, creating new ways to create energy. Mm. In fact, if you look at this embassy, for example, we have put a lot of uh, focus on making sure that we plant indigenous plants. Right because it requires less water. Right. Uh, we have uh, gone through the process of putting an irrigation system in where when the grounds are watered, it's done by a, a, a built-in sprinkler system as opposed to watering the ground. You know, you waste a lot of water with a water hose trying to uh, uh, water the lawns. And we've done that intentionally because we wanted this place to model our efforts on uh, climate responsibility. Oh, that's interesting. It starts within, from within. So we are seeing shifting patterns of weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, in recently, I think uh, U.S. Embassy have played a, a significant role in the, in the disaster in, 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 uh, in Manyara. Could you yeah. care to comment about that? Well, you know, 
that's an excellent example of, of climate erosion, where you have mudslides that are created by excessive rain because of erosion. That's one of the devastating effects of climate change. The U.S. Embassy immediately responded by providing funds through the World Food Program to make sure that people are able to be fed. And we provided those funds directly to the World Food Program with absolute certainty that every dime will go directly to feeding people. Uh, and so the hunger that comes as a result of the erosion shows how climate change and its devastating effects have a multiplier effect on human life. In your time here, have you met projects or initiatives that you think are really working uh, in terms of climate adaptation? Uh, and uh, what are the example of those those those? Well, projects? what example is next gen? I yeah. mean, when you, when you consider that uh, about seventy percent of all of the daytime power right. in the whole city of Kigoma is Kigoma is produced by solar, mm -hmm. which is a uh, source of energy that God has gifted Tanzania yeah. with. Yeah. When you look at uh, President Samia's efforts on clean cooking, yeah. uh, what she just did at the most recent COP uh, a gathering with people from all over the world looking at ways to preserve mm -hmm. uh, the climate, she led the way. Yeah. by setting up and leading as a president, leading this session on how people can cook more efficiently and do so in a clean manner. What we're doing protecting uh, Gumbe region here in uh, Tanzania, not just providing opportunities for chimpanzee survival, but providing a case study on how uh, people and nature can live side by side without either disrupting the other, right. but living in a way uh, showing the mutual coexistence and the sharing of, of the planet. So there are a lot of different ways of the, the work we do at USAID yeah. uh, that focuses on, on climate. The things that we do to uh, support people like yourself right. as Humphrey Fellows who have an interest in climate change and climate adopt, uh, adoptiveness. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I guess coming this month, uh, and when the world is coming out of COP, uh, would you care to comment how can local people or organizations uh, do better in terms of uh, climate responsibility in align with the global well, you, you, you know, most of the time when we think about climate change, we think about big things mm -hmm. that ever that, that can be done by nations and by corporations. But small things like uh, making sure that we uh, recycle, right? Or making sure that we uh, don't throw away waste that could be used for composting purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we drive less by organizing the trips that we take, mm. um, as opposed to going to the grocery store four times a week, mm. organize the travel to the grocery store and go one time a week right. with a good shopping list. Those are simple things that anybody and everybody can do. Mm. Uh, now, Tanzania doesn't have to worry about it, but in the U.S., uh, when I lived in places like Ohio and Connecticut, where we had to make sure that we did not turn the heat up so high in the wintertime, mm. Uh, but you modulate how you heat and cool uh, your house. Uh, that's a way of preserving the climate. Um, driving smaller cars, driving electric vehicles, another way to preserve the climate. Well, thank you. And we want to make sure that I also focus on the fact that you have spent a lot of your time and energy a trained attorney, yes. but yet you give your time and energy now to protecting the climate. I would like to know why you made this shift in, in your life and career. It was very clear with some of the challenges that my community was going through. So I started then, but uh, I was later inspired by Dr. Jane Gudo uh, through the Russian shoot programs, and later on through the various programs for, from the U.S. Embassy. Uh, but uh, most, mostly is that I, I've, I had an opportunity to work with communities around Sadat National Park. Uh, and there we were working to restore unique wildlife corridors. So the challenges that we saw between people and wildlife, there was a lose-lose situation. So I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to learn about that. I 
wanted to be involved and see how can I be a better person in terms of my contribution to my community. Okay. Yeah. Well, your, your story makes us happy uh, because part of what we do with, at the U.S. Embassy is we try to support programs right. like Jane Goodall, not even knowing mm. that people like you represent the continuation of her legacy. So I thank you for all you do uh, to protect the earth. There's only one earth, and all of us share it, and all of us are responsible for it. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for what I you do. It. I appreciate you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you.